All right, welcome back to Ratchet and Clank Going Commando Developer Commentary. I am Mike episode... Stout. Oh, I'm Tony Garcia. <laughs> and this is episode... Something. I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, an episode not recorded on the 4th of July. That's right. And uh, this is another one of my levels. Uh, yes, it is. Look, it... look at the fireflies. Yes, that's right. The fireflies were uh, all me. I'm going to take all the credit for those. All those fireflies. Yeah, this is uh, this is the level I'm very proud of. Uh, I don't, I think designed by Colin. I, even, I think maybe I I don't want to say Colin, but I kind of do want to say Colin, so I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not exactly sure who the designer was. It was either but, Colin or Brian. It was one of the two. Uh, but the artist was Craig Goodman. Yes, uh, again, and uh, Craig did a very good job with this level. And uh, what what I like about this level is I saw. Craig's art, and I, w I liked the art so much that I felt a need to Step go it up. a little bit above and beyond my normal lazy attitude towards work <laughs> and actually add some more detail and and, uh, and and just really go the extra mile on this level to really make his art shine. And that's sort of where the Fireflies were born out of, because we needed uh, as we talked about in the previous episode, you need some sort of ambient things going on in the background. Right. We don't have flying we cars in this level. We didn't want to do flying cars because it really didn't fit with the art that he had done, this sort of very natural environment. Right. It didn't so the, the really make a lot of sense to have flying cars. So the challenge was, well, if you can't do flying cars, what are you going to do? That's right. How can you have something else in the background that sort of fills that role? And what we ended up doing was coming up with these fireflies that are all over the level. And I think they did a pretty good job in terms of standing out from being just like all the flying cars in the other levels. Uh, Mar Mar what, Mary? Wait, wait, you have interesting things to say about this level? No. Come here. No. Put the headphones on. No. You don't have to play. I'll play. You just talk. Tony, we're going to have you talk to Mary, because she actually has interesting things to say. Okay, so this is the second hover bike race of, uh, of the game Take, that takes place in Planet Joba. Yep. And we're bringing back Mary, who has extensive knowledge of the hover bike races, Hello. to provide some additional commentary and just mix things up a little bit uh, for, this, for this little part of the episode. So let's get moving, and let's start the hover bike race. All right, go for the race. So Mary, you uh, this was another one of the, the big levels that you had to test over and over and over and over. Oh, and over of course. Again, right. Let's talk really quick about testing Ratchet and Clank on Commando because that's something we didn't really touch on too much in your last one. You were that's true. You did QA and testing on Ratchet and Clank on Commando. Yeah. How long were you there as a tester on this game? Three or four months. Uh, I do remember one more. Uh, we were there till four in the morning. I remember you were there. We were at Max's computer trying to give him. Uh, insight like what we were trying to fix with the with one of the arenas and we didn't uh -huh. want we didn't want to call max in because it was four in the freaking morning <laughs> that's you know what that's a good thing you know what that's that's another thing we haven't really touched on and that is the worst thing that happens to you as a game developer is uh basically what you what you basically touched on is as you're going on into crunch you're working a lot of really crazy hours. It's just a yeah. part of the game industry, is the way it goes. And I, it's not we're not really here to debate the merits of crunch or whatever. Well, no. It just happens. Crunch was a thing that happened. And you work really late, and every now and then, you finally just get your work done, and you go home. Uh -huh. You just want to go home and rest and take the time. But Test generally stays there long after the developers uh, leave. Test is usually the last ones to leave. We're one of them, uh, yeah. On the development cycle. And if you're coming up on a deadline, which we often were, if Test finds a really bad bug, you're gonna get a phone call, and oh, you're yeah. gonna be asked to come in to fix a deadline, to fix your bug for the deadline. And that's probably the worst thing that can happen. See, it's, it's funny because the way I got around being called in during that time was, uh, and this was back, when was this game made? 2004? 2003, Something. 2004, since about right? Yeah. And yeah. so, in the even in the year 2004, I was one of those last few <laughs> remaining holdouts 
who refused to buy a cell phone. Just never. Yes. In, in 2004, I had no cell phone, and nobody can convince me that it was good idea to buy a cell phone. I don't think you got a cell phone until 2010. Phone. Maybe 2009 uh, at the earliest. 2007, I was think, it? is when I got it. Because that's whenever the first iPhone came out, okay. that's when I bought a cell phone. Okay. But that's how I got around getting called in. I would basically, I made it known, look, I don't have a cell phone. I'm not going to get a cell phone. <laughs> when I am out of the office, good luck trying to reach me. <laughs> not the best policy in terms of, you know, <laughs> pleasing my bosses, but that's just how it was. And that's kind of how I got around getting called in too often. Well, you still stayed really late because that one evening with the blade balls, you were trying to help fix it so Max didn't have to get called in at four in the morning. But about this level, uh, one of the things I was thinking of that was interesting is Mike described the, Mike was describing how art and design have to interact in this level. Like, like how much room there is for Ratchet to go through in proportion with uh, the art that's going around it, plus the plus the collision going around it, so Ratchet could actually get through and a player can get through the level. And it's confusing to try and explain to the artist, yeah, you have a, a you know an area of this wide around for Ratchet, and then they put you know leaves and vines and things, but to remind them, no, no, the space that's given includes the vines and things, so it actually has to be bigger than that, plus the collision to get players through. And it's that's one of the things I thought was interesting about this level is learning about collision and art and design going together. Right, and all the rules that you have to take into account yeah. to get anything done. It's complicated. Like, the artists have a really hard time trying to make things look as good as they do with uh, while the player is going through the level and still trying to get all the gameplay in. It's like where enemies are coming from and all. It's like they, they have a huge challenge. But yeah, just to go back to touch on to what you were saying yes. about uh, with the arenas and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was, there was a ton of camaraderie on the team. Yeah. And I think that was one of the big things that... Um, it's, it's easy to overlook, but everybody there was so committed to making sure that this game got done and it's as good as it could be that even if it wasn't you know your job per se right. a lot of people took on tasks that weren't theirs oh yeah just to you know so people could go home mm -hmm. every now and again yeah because people didn't like if they happened to be there they'd want to you know try and fix something so someone else didn't have to get called in right it's just something people try to do to be nice to each other. Cause some, you know, it always worked out in the end, like because someone else would always stay for you, or there was always give and take that kept happening. Right, exactly. I mean, it's there was a couple sections of the game where there really wasn't anybody else that could do that kind of stuff, yeah. and I felt bad for those people. Oh yeah, things like the HUD and things like that. Yeah where it was really just one guy who knew the system mm -hmm. and could go in there and make it work. And that was always a huge pain. Yeah. I hated reopening bugs. <laughs> 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 Especially if, if I was reopening it for like the third or fourth or fifth time. Oh, I just felt awful. I was like, oh, this poor programmer. Because I couldn't figure out why it was happening. I didn't know quite enough. I knew a little bit to describe it properly, but there was always... A little something else that I just didn't quite, couldn't quite get because I wasn't a programmer at the time. Just like, right. This is sort of what I thought was going on. Sorry. <laughs> well, it's uh, another just quick thing about test is that I think just to talk about QA because I did QA as well. Oh yeah. For people that don't know, uh, I did QA on Ratchet and Clank One, and uh, you. It's a very strange relationship that QA has. It is. With Development because you end up getting the, a lot of the brunt of the stress when uh, when you're working in QA. That's true. And I guess it's it's a bit unfair, but it yeah. happens when people get stressed out and you're not going home for a while, and a, that bug gets reopened for the fourth time. Yeah. Uh, sometimes people will just go off, <laughs> uh, and uh, it. The way I would try to mask it was to just <laughs> sort of playfully be that way all the time. Mm -hmm. So when I did sort of go off, people would be like, oh, that's just that's just him. <laughs> it's not a big deal. But uh, I got a talking to a couple of times that I needed to be nicer to the testers because I was a bit of a jerk. 
<laughs> I think I and did I actually notice. Actually, got pulled aside. Uh, it might have been on Up Your Arsenal where I actually oh, okay. got to talking to, but I did get pulled aside at least a couple of times. We're like, you gotta tone it down. <laughs> Maybe I just thought, so, just because I'd known you so long before that point, it's like, ah, oh, whatever. We're just working. <laughs> what is this, Mike's 10th time doing this? Something like that. Yeah, my, yeah. this is not an easy race. I remember having a harder time with this one than, than with level 4. And even though I was hover bike chick, yeah, this one was harder. Just to uh, to alert people, there might be some good editing here. Oh, if yeah. Mary and I actually run out of things to talk about, <laughs> we'll probably just edit it up to the uh, like the twentieth attempt when Mike actually succeeds <laughs> doing the hover bike race. I think you're right. Yeah, Mike's gonna do some awesome editing. So when you uh, you had to do the skill points for these basically, where you had to get your time down pat. Did we yes. actually use your best time for the skill points, or did we take your best time and subtract them down a little bit to human levels <laughs> before we put in the skill points? Do you recall at all? To be honest, I don't remember the skill points. I I, I don't remember how I, I did a lot of the. Uh, of course, I was halfway. I think what was it? Three to five, four months. I was testing on this game, so I didn't test till the end of it. So I might have missed right. the skill point part. I remember doing. Oh, what was the biggest part? Oh, well, regression was definitely big. I wish if I had a. Uh, no card. Yeah, I wanted to say regression monkey on it, <laughs> but testers didn't, <laughs> testers didn't get cars. But I wanted it to say reg regression monkey. I remember that. Um, let's see. I did the help desk messages. So like in level zero. Oh, that's the worst. The worst <laughs> possible QA job. I I know no, we're okay, in like gonna, level I, nine, eleven, or something. But let's explain that really quickly help because desk? that is the worst <laughs> QA job. So help desk testing involves basically going through the game and the, the little basically tutorial messages that pop up at the bottom of the screen are, are what we call help desk right. in this game. And your job in help desk testing is to make sure every single one of those messages plays at the appropriate time yes. in the game. Yes. And they're all throughout the game. Oh yeah. And the conditions to actually trigger a help desk message can be ridiculous. <laughs> Things like stand in this one location for five minutes and then the help desk message should play. Right. Kind of stuff. Yeah. Or and in level when sorry, in level zero where it's like if you haven't used a certain amount of ammo at all and you're just using the wrench, it, it was a specific number of ammo, like five or something. If you don't use that much ammo, it lets you know you can use weapons or can change right. weapons. And that was oh, thankfully it was in lesson le, uh, level zero, so it was easy enough to test that one because it wasn't going through multiple levels. But yeah. So what ends up happening with help desk is since you have to basically sit around for five minutes or whatever, you might get distracted, yeah, or you might look away, yeah. and then the help desk message would play, but you'll catch like a flash of it, and then you'll be like, oh, <laughs> did did it play? I think it played. I, and then you're like, then you realize, oh, I have to do that again, right? Because yep, I didn't, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> and so help desk turns into just this monumentally ta monumental task of just trying to remain focused. Oh yeah. And figuring out what's going on. That was a lot of work. Yeah, help desk was the worst, <laughs> the worst possible QA job. Just for people who want to know what the worst job <laughs> on Ratchet and Clank Going Commando was, help desk tested was the worst, <laughs> the worst thing that you could do. Because it's a test of patience and concentration. All right, I think Mike's just killing time on these. Yes, he, he's killing time he's because we're still talking. Everybody. But yeah, I think so, Mike's done, uh, so I, I can think give it's him back. Time to, let's say goodbye to Mary. Mary, thank you for taking for helping us uh, kill some of the monotony on this episode. You're welcome. The, Thanks, Tony. Developer commentary. Yes. And uh, let's get back to Mike. Okay, here's back to Mike. Sweet Jesus, dude. That is fucking torture. <laughs> How many tries was that, Mike? Uh, to fit, to beat the one or of the second one? Beat the one. Uh, beat the one. To beat the one, it was five tries. That's good. That's a good number of tries. Holy! But now you have shit. the charge boots, uh, so now we'll be able to just blast through these others. Is that what I got? Okay, cool. Go charge boots. Uh, let's go fill up your ammo, and then we'll head back into the enemy section here. 